Okay, bare face, no makeup. I decided not to put on makeup today, guys. <laughs> it's, um, it is hot, 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 hot. Anyway, getting ready to taste the next wine. Hope you guys enjoy. As he is teaching the wine club, it's it's um, it's educational, and um, of course, um, wine lovers come and they learn uh, much about the wine and where it's from and how um, best to enjoy it. So this is a very fantastic place and experience. So this second wine mm -hmm. I'm about to try comes from. A little further south, we're in the Campania region, so that's okay. the region where Naples is located. And this is a great, mm -hmm. very typical of that region called Falangina. Mm -hmm. Forgive me if you've never heard of it, it really only grows in this area. In fact, it was originally brought um, by the ancient Greeks oh, okay. a few thousand years ago, so I think <laughs> we can call it native to this area by now, but very yes. typical of the Campania. Um, you know, when we're looking at the, these kinds of wines, we're looking first at the color. So that lovely golden color coming out of it. Um, different from the last one, which is a little bit lighter. Yes. This is telling me that it's coming from a warmer climate, right? Darker. It's beautiful. The, the, the color of the wine, the warmer the sun is. Yes. Yeah. It's so beautiful. It actually reminds me of actual gold. Yeah, it does have yes. this light golden color. It's very, mm -hmm. Yeah. Put your nose to the test. Okay. Mm, now it smells like um, a sweet. Um, I don't know. The first thing that wants to come to my mind is plum, but I know that's not well, what it is. Definitely sweeter fruits and stone. <laughs> this fruit. Like a little yes. Sense. I, mm -hmm. I mean, I think I would. I would go mm -hmm. more like apricot. Apricot. There we go. Yes. Yeah? Yes. So these are still stone fruits. Sweeter mm -hmm. fruits, right? We're moving away. Yes. Remember the last one we were talking about citrus. Yes. We we're talking about more sour fruits. Yes. This one's really richer, mm -hmm. sweeter. Sweeter. Now, yes. don't think that it's going to be a sweet wine because there's no okay. sugar sweetness in the wine. Okay. It's just the fact that it is. Uh, it reminds you of these sweeter fruits. Oh, okay. Okay. And no, no bubbles. We're looking no mostly bubbles. at color here. Ciao. It's a don't get chilly. Poi ci sentiamo. Sì, 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 certo. Grazie. Ciao. So, right, it's, no. so we're looking mostly at color. Yeah, exactly. Okay. We're looking really only at the color at the when color. we're talking about these white wines. Okay. The other thing you can look at is what we call the legs of the wine. Have you heard that term before? Mm -hmm. So if you give yeah. your glass a good couple of Oh, swirls, I've seen, I've seen that. Seen that I've, yes, move, I've yeah. seen that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and I wasn't <laughs> sure why. <laughs> you'll see the wine will stick to the side of the glass. Yes. And then eventually gravity will start pulling it down and it's going to create these little droplets. And those are what we call the legs. Or the tears of the, the wine. The tears of the wine. Or and I see it in the glass. poetic term you want to give. Yeah, okay. what that's telling us more than anything else is mm -hmm. the alcohol content of the wine. Okay. Essentially, the thicker, the stickier these legs act, yes. the higher the percentage of alcohol. Okay, so the thicker the legs, the higher the percentage mm -hmm. of alcohol. Yeah, exactly. So this okay. is a wine, for example, that's 13% alcohol, okay. which is pretty average. Yes. I'll uh, tell mm -hmm. you, in Italy nowadays, for whites mm -hmm. and reds, 13% mm -hmm. is pretty much our going average. But you kind of keep that in your mind as 30 percent, and then you see how it changes okay. from wine to wine. Okay. And Sorry. again, Sorry. in the nose. <laughs> um, the the nose has those richer notes too, for sure. Let's compare mm -hmm. it. To the yes, that's good. Oh, this is so good. Nice, right? Yes. And it has a, a lighter taste. Mm -hmm. It's much lighter. Than, um, than what you expect. Yes. Yeah. The other one was much gold ah, in taste. I see. Okay. Yes. Well, this definitely has a much softer taste. Yes, texture, softer. Right? Mm -hmm. The last one, remember we talked about the yes. acidity was a little tart. Yes. A little sharp. Mm -hmm. This one doesn't have that. No. Uh, it's, it no. still has acidity, of course, but a much mm -hmm. lesser amount, so it's not as sharp. Sharp. Right. So, right. And um, I think this would be easy for someone that would, you know, normally would probably wouldn't like wine as okay. much. I think it would be an, a good um, wine to introduce them to, maybe. Oh, okay. Yeah, I, I don't disagree with that. It's I mean, softer. it's not, mm -hmm. it's not anything, yeah, it's a little bit mm -hmm. um, easier drinking, perhaps, yes. in that regard. It's not, it mm -hmm. doesn't have any sharp elbows sticking out. Yeah. Yes, and this one is 13%, but that one was 100. It was 100, yeah. <laughs> so, Did you feel it was 100? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, so this is, I think, will be a really good... Yeah, yeah. yeah. this one's easy yeah. for you. <laughs> now, the 
this one will go mm -hmm. great. I mean, when we talk about food pairings with this one, mm -hmm. uh, I mean, keep in mind the first thing to, to, mm -hmm. to suggest is to think locally, right? Mm -hmm. Use an expression here, we say if it goes together, if it, if it grows together, it goes, it goes together, right? In the sense mm -hmm. that local food and local wine yes. go hand in hand, right? Mm -hmm. So thinking of the food of Kampan, you can imagine Naples, Amalfi Coast, all those beautiful coastline uh, towns, a lot of seafood. Right. Yes. Uh, oh. This would be beautiful. great for seafood. Yeah, oh yes. Seafood. Now you, that that's right down my alley. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I love I love to have wine with pasta and seafood. Yeah, definitely. That's usually when I have wine. Sure. Or maybe sometimes with steak. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Uh, I wouldn't recommend this one necessarily mm. with steak, <laughs> no. but yeah, I'm with you for sure. Yes. Um, but this one with seafood dishes, mm -hmm. with you know grilled fish. Um, mm -hmm. Talking about pasta, yes. we can definitely do a lot of different pasta dishes. Have you mm -hmm. had anything uh, since you've been? Well, in not Rome? yet. I've had pizza. I okay. was I was hanging out with two friends, two new friends I made, uh -huh. and so we did pizza yesterday, and then I had a burger. So okay. I have yet to sit down and enjoy a pasta dish. Well, which I, I definitely will. recommend it because mm -hmm. in Rome we do some amazing, amazing pastas. Yes. Um, yes. First and foremost, pasta carbonara. Yeah. Mm. Pasta carbonara. Carbonara. Okay. Which is mm -hmm. essentially it's a white sauce, okay. egg yolk, yes. pecorino romano cheese, which mm -hmm. is a sheep's milk cheese, quite salty. Yes. Um, and one chale, which are the mm. pork jowls. So mm -hmm. it's a really fatty cut of pork. Well, I'm glad I'm recording this so I can play it back. There you go. <laughs> and remember, remember. Yes. remember what to, to order. Exactly. Yes. And you get this really rich, creamy, cheesy mm -hmm. sauce that yes. this would stand up really well. Now this, you know, how difficult it is to find these type of wines that you're having me try. So these, uh, we tend to work with smaller producers mm -hmm. just uh, in general. So these mm -hmm. are ones that don't often export. Yes. And if they do, it's in small uh, amounts okay. anyway. But if you don't find a particular uh, mm -hmm. producer, which in this case is this tiny little writing down here, Ted mm -hmm. Bianti is the name of the winemaker. Okay. Mm -hmm. Look for other wines that are called this. Okay. Fabi. The name of the grape, okay. and it will tell you can see it where it comes there. from. Make sure to see it. Falamina. So. Okay. Right. Okay. Um, and you'll find wines that are very similar in style to this, mm -hmm. even if it's not made from the same producer because it comes from that same area mm -hmm. and it's made from the same grape. It'll okay. be very similar in style. Okay. Makes sense? Now, how is it? Of course, um, this might sound a little um, not very in, in intellectual. Um, because I know there's different types of grapes, mm -hmm. of course, um, but how is it that they're, they're managing, well, I guess with the fermentation and the yeast is what that allows them to get rid of the sweetness yes. from the different yeah. types of grapes? Absolutely. that's exactly mm -hmm. what's happening. The, mm -hmm. the process of fermentation yes. is, is that of changing the sugar yes. from, the, from the grape mm -hmm. into alcohol. Right? Yes. Something that mm -hmm. our forefathers, the Romans, and the ancient yes. Greeks before them figured out almost yes. accidentally. And it's so interesting how they figured that out. Yeah, yes. exactly. So mm -hmm. essentially, there's yeast that grows on the skin of the grape itself. Oh. Right? So if you crush a mm -hmm. grape and, mm -hmm. and it automatically starts um, mm -hmm. to, to bubble over, you know mm -hmm. what's happening. Essentially, that yeast has, come, has found uh, the sugar mm -hmm. and the juice and it's converted it into alcohol. And that's called alcohol fermentation. All of these wines mm -hmm. that we're tasting today, like the vast majority of wines made in Italy, mm -hmm. are made totally dry. Okay. Which is to say, all the sugar is allowed to ferment into alcohol. Okay. There are other wine making areas. Germany is a good example of mm -hmm. this. We had a German Riesling before, or mm -hmm. um, you know, a lot of California wines where they will actually stop that fermentation mm -hmm. process yes. and leave a little bit of that sugar unfermented. Oh. So that's where you get wines that are a little bit sweeter. Okay. Uh, but that's not going to be the case in Italy. Most, most mm -hmm. wines in Italy are made all the way until the sugar is, is completely It's gone. Yeah. Okay. Is it just um, by preference in this region, I mean, you uh, think? Honestly, it's more than anything else, just mm -hmm. the way it al it, it's always been, and that's mm -hmm. because it's a warmer climate here. Yes. Um, the fermentation process happens a lot more easily, Easy. but because okay. of those traditions, mm -hmm. yes, it has become a preference, preference. for sure. Okay. Yeah, that's what they're looking to find, for sure. Now, that, that's not to say we don't have sweet wines. I mean, we make dessert wines here, too which have mm -hmm. to be quite sweet. Mm -hmm. uh, in those cases, though, you're dealing with a whole separate process that we can go into if you're interested. But when we're talking about regular still mm -hmm. wines, you'll, you'll be pairing with your meal. Uh -huh. They're always going to be dry. Fine. Okay. Yeah. Well, I have the capacity probably for just one more tasting, and yeah. then that's my limit. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, I have one more in mind for you, so. Okay, wonderful. I'll Thank right you. Okay. <laughs> I hope you guys are enjoying this experience as much as I am. Alright, so...
This one is mm -hmm. a little bit oh, more personal. Yay, so red. More, more dealing red. Yay, red. And it's a, mm -hmm. an area that's not very well known for its winemaking, or not okay. very well known at all, I might even argue. It's a yes. region called Molise. Molise. So this region mm -hmm. just south and east of Rome. Okay. Two hour drive from here, very close. Mm -hmm. um, it happens to be the region where my parents are from, so I'm a little, oh, I'm a little okay. attached to this yes. wine for that reason alone. But this mm. is a very interesting grape. This is a grape mm -hmm. called Tintilia. Tintilia. Tintilia, mm -hmm. which is uh, right there. Right mm -hmm. there yeah. um, which is an ancient grape mm -hmm. that they've only found here in the entire world. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. Okay. It's a grape that only grows here in the mm -hmm. Molise region, so it's kind of their okay. their uh, their proudest uh, production for sure. Okay. Uh, 2016 okay. is the year of this of this wine, and we'll talk mm -hmm. about why that's important. Maybe taste it but okay we're looking at the color of the wine now there's an interesting bubbling thing that's going yeah, on yeah bubbling here. thing that's just a, because i just poured <laughs> it and it pour. kind of stirred up okay. some air but it's not a okay. it's not a, a it's, sparkling wine or anything okay. like that it's um, really still that will, that will dissipate okay. um when you're looking at the color more important though mm -hmm. is really the shade of red, red you're looking at and, yes. and very important if you take even a napkin okay go ahead and grab a napkin mm -hmm. there mm -hmm. and place it behind your glass and tilt it as much as you can, and look down on it from above, as if you're sort of looking down on a lake. And you see kind of the outer shores yes. of that lake, how it gets lighter. Yes, it it's lighter and then darker. Yeah, exactly. Yes. Darker in the center, and then as yes. it progresses out, it gets lighter and almost kind of an orangey color. Mm -hmm. you see that? Yes. What you're seeing there is a sign of aging. Of aging. aging. It's oh. a sign that this wine is in contact with oxygen. Okay. Right, in the same way you put metal mm -hmm. out in the air and it, mm -hmm. it turns orange. Right? Yes. It rusts. Mm -hmm. That's what's happening in your wine. It's rusting. Oh. It's oxidizing. Oxidizing. Okay. Yeah, exactly. And what's happening there uh, is really important to uh, mm -hmm. the flavor of the wine, which we'll talk about when we get there. But it is important mm -hmm. already to know that that color is changing. Okay. Tell me about the nose. Okay. Okay, let me see. Now this is this is interesting. There's a different oh, smell. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there, there, there's definitely a different smell here. Yes, um, of course. Yeah, we're moving into a whole new set yeah, of Yeah, it's different. Um, See if you can get it. I, I, mm. It's different. Um, so think. It, it reminds me of well, growing up. This is probably funny, and I can't remember um, what we call it, but sometimes they use it in church. Okay. Like a, a certain kind of great wine for communion okay. purposes. So it was a certain kind of wine that it reminds <laughs> yes. you of. So it definitely is a grapey. Okay. It's definitely a, a grapey smell, um, but I, I can't pinpoint. Okay. Well, think mm -hmm. about, I mean, other kinds of fruit. Besides mm -hmm. the grape, of course, mm -hmm. it is made from grapes, but think about maybe red fruits. Think about, mm -hmm. you know, Blackberry. Black. Oh, okay. Dark cherry. Cherries. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. These kind of richer, almost inkier yes. fruits. Yes. You know. Yes. Mm -hmm. This one you can even talk about plum or prune. Yes. Right? Yes. These kind of richer, yes. darker fruits really come out in this wine. Um, it's a beautiful smell. And the, the color is beautiful yeah, as well. Yeah. Yeah. And you and see the legs there again. Yes. Yeah. Very smooth. And the legs are, you see how the legs are? Um, it's, yeah. Yeah. It's definitely sticking. They're sticking. And hopefully you'll mm -hmm. see them sticking a little bit more because, in fact, we're moving up to 14%. Last one was 13. Here we're oh, 14, so this is 14. So okay. A little, bit, a little bit boozier again. Okay. <laughs> but uh, that makes a difference in those legs. For yeah. Sure. Well, go ahead and have a taste. Yes, yeah, so why does people do it? That's for tasting purposes. Yeah, yeah the yes. slurp. Yes. You mm -hmm. want to give it a try? Mm -hmm. Just go ahead. There you go. <laughs> the why. <laughs> it's not just to sound obnoxious, uh -huh. although there, there is a part of that. <laughs> for sure, we want to look like we, we want to look like wine snobs, right. for sure. <laughs> But no, uh, another reason, and the more, the more serious reason, is that it helps you to taste the wine. Because when we talk about our sense of taste, yes. you have to remember it's really limited to four things. Mm -hmm. Sweet, sour, salty, and bitter. Right? Yes. Mm -hmm. Everything else we're tasting, 
-hmm. really comes from your sense of smell. Yes. That's why we have a cold when you're congested, right? Yes. You can't taste anything. So slurping yes. pulls those smells, those aromas back here. It's what we call the retronasal passage. Okay. Which is that tunnel that connects your nose to your mouth. So you'll smell more mm -hmm. and turn to taste more. And you can taste more. So it really is in your own best interest. Too. So now you guys understand why they do that. Yeah. <laughs> now if you're if you're out with friends to dinner, maybe it's a little <laughs> it's a little rude, but uh, you got a tasting like this, totally acceptable. Yeah. Yeah. What do you what I usually do is kind of kind of swash it around in my yeah, mouth. Definitely. You want but to I don't know if it has the same effect. Yeah, you want to definitely touch all parts oh, of the shirt. Sure. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it's even like blowing it up, but then it goes a little bit everywhere, and it's good. That, like, that's just the way to get everything. You know? Yeah, we're introducing yeah. oxygen to the mm -hmm. wine as well, which is very important. Mm -hmm. How do you like the taste? It's good. It's more like um, the red wines that I tell you I like. Um, not very sweet. A right. bit, it has a little bit of a dry taste. Yeah, so mm -hmm. in that it dries out your mm -hmm. mouth, do you mean? Mm -hmm. and this has what we call tannins. Mm -hmm. right? Tannins are that drying out effect that you yes. get in a lot of red wines. Yes. Um, and it comes from the, the grape itself, from the mm -hmm. skin of the grape. The same yes. reason why a red wine is red in color. Yes. It's not from the, the juice. If you squeeze mm -hmm. the juice out of a red grape, it looks like a white wine. Yes. Red wines are red because it sits with these skins. Of the grape and takes the mm -hmm. takes the color off of that. And I have a tendency sometimes when I drink it, I would just yeah. It makes you want to. Yeah, exactly. Yes. You need something. Mm -hmm. You need some salivation. Exactly. Yes. Mm -hmm. So um, first thing I'll tell you is that the reason why this wine has seen this amount of aging, like mm -hmm. we talked about, that it's a five-year-old wine, mm -hmm. is because that time in the bottle and in the barrel adds oxygen, which softens the tannin. Okay. So if you went to go taste this back in, in 2016, it would have been even more drying, even more tannic. Okay. So this needs a little bit of time to yes, smooth, smooth out, out the rough edges. Yes. Does it make it more stronger the longer it sits? No, no. The alcohol no. remains the same. Okay. Um, that mm -hmm. always stays the same. Mm -hmm. The flavor changes mm -hmm. uh, a lot of times for the better. In fact, this mm -hmm. is why we look for wines that can age for 20, 30 years because mm -hmm. that change evolves the flavor of the wine as well. So that, that affects um, flavor, but what affects the potency that will make it 16%? That's to, only um, in the winemaking process, okay. right? As mm -hmm. soon as um, the grapes are picked, mm -hmm. um, you can actually, in fact, uh, winemakers will often decide when to pick the grape yes. based on the sugar level. Okay. Right? And so they yes. go around the, the vineyard. The older, pick. it's more riper. Exactly. Yes. The longer mm -hmm. it sits on the vine, the riper yes. it gets, the more sugar it has, yes. which means it translates into more alcohol. Got it. Remember so the, the sugar. sweeter, the sh more sugar, the exactly. stronger. Exactly. Ah, that's exactly okay. right. So that's why you want to, winemakers will find a balance between mm -hmm. the ripeness of the grape, yes. but not being too ripe that it creates too much uh, sugar, which then translates into more, Got into it. too much alcohol. Okay. Um, so these tannins, though, are also important to think about when we're making that food pairing. Mm -hmm. Remember you mentioned steak with yes. wine? Yes. Mm -hmm. This is your steak wine. And, yes. Right? Because mm -hmm. a juicy steak will have to really balance that. Drying yes, and I must have um, pasta and I must have steak while I'm in Italy. Yeah, definitely. Yeah, just to see how it is. There we go. You yeah. Do it. <laughs> this would go really nicely with like, certain kinds of pasta as well, especially mm -hmm. like a meat sauce, like a ragu bolognese, or mm -hmm. something like that. The red sauce? Yeah, mm -hmm. exactly. Yes. I enjoy this. I really like this. I'm glad. Yeah. Cheers. I've enjoyed my visit here. Oh, so good. Yes, yeah. yeah. And I must. Can you kindly um, let everyone know the name sure. of um, the wine club and where they can so find you guys? We're called Vino Roma. Mm -hmm. uh, we're um, in the Monti neighborhood of Rome. Um, you can find us at our website, vinoroma.com. And there you find all the information about classes like this one that we're doing together here, um, longer courses to get more in depth about wine. Winemaker uh, tastings where the winemaker uh, themselves come, they come and, and show their own wares, all kinds of courses and events, food tours, yes. uh, no shortage of things. Amazing. Yeah. Do you allow um, individuals to sort of rent the space if they wanted to have events here yeah, as absolutely. well? Absolutely, we also do that, mm -hmm. and that's also on, on the website mm -hmm. if you're looking to do a, a private mm -hmm. event, you mm -hmm. know, we can rent out the space. We have, um, mm -hmm. you know, the 
glasses and, and plates and, and yes. everything you possibly need to do in a, a mm -hmm. fun kind of private event. Amazing. And that's not to mention the cellar downstairs. Yes. Which, of course. Oh, yes. And guys, the cellar is amazing. It is authentic. Um, it's definitely an added feature to you must see. So, yes. We'll save I'll, that one mm -hmm. secret though, you got to come see it <laughs> yes, in person. Yes, yeah. I've definitely enjoyed myself here. Um, this was really great. I believe I've learned a lot more about wines. Right. And um, so it gives me a, a deeper appreciation of um, what it takes for us as consumers, you know. So yeah. thank you so it's much. It's a pleasure. Thank yes. you. Cheers. Yes. Cheers. Cheers. Thanks for coming. Thank you guys, amazing, amazing.